I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Friday, February the 25th, brought to you in part by Norbrook. Norbrook strives to provide greater value in the generic products it provides, including making enhancements in formulation, packaging, and economical costs over Pioneer products. For more information, go to Norbrook.com. Tastes like swan. And you say, well, what does that mean? Well, it's kind of like, tastes like chicken. Everything tastes like chicken uh, whenever you uh, don't know what you're eating. Well, anything that hits the markets, that affects the markets, tastes like swan to the cattle markets. It, it, everything seems like another black swan deal. Stuff that doesn't have anything to do with the cattle business uh, seems to affect cattle every time. And every one of those things makes cattle uh, go down for the most part. What makes cattle go up? Less cattle. That, that's pretty much it. You know, maybe once in a while cheaper grains, but like I, I mentioned earlier in the week, high, you know, high corn makes high cattle. Uh, that, that doesn't always measure up. But uh, this, this war here that we've got going with uh, Russia attacking Ukraine, it looks like it's going to be another black swan event. That'll be like the fourth one we've seen here uh, in recent years because we had the, the fire in Holcomb, Kansas. Uh, we had the, the pandemic come in. We had the, the hacking of the computers, which I don't know uh, if you want to include that one, but a lot of people do. But, but this uh, Ukrainian war deal, it, it's, uh, it's, it's killing the cattle market, and it could ruin our opportunity for a rally here. It's unbelievable. Uh, your feeder cattle were down as hard as I remember, you know, for a long, long time in recent memory, down hard. I think most of that was uh, hedging pressure. I think, you know, everybody's just like, oh my God, here we've been staring these handsome prices uh, in the face here for months and we haven't uh, tied to them, we haven't uh, hedged anything, and everybody I know getting hedged up, well, that's a lot of pressure. We're the only industry in the world that bets against itself every season. But, uh, you know, that's just really hurting our, their cattle market. And uh, it doesn't seem fair that every single thing that happens, you know, if the economy's bad, it hurts the cattle market. If, uh, if there's a drought somewhere, it hurts the cattle market. If, uh, you know, if oil goes up, it hurts the cattle market. Everything that hurts the cattle market. You know, and the only thing that we can really count on to help the cattle market is fewer cattle. Well, that's just basic old supply and demand, stupid, ain't it? But uh, we got a cattle on feed report coming out here on Friday today, uh, just like we do every month. Uh, comes out at two o'clock central. Nobody paying any attention to it at all. Couldn't even really see any uh, educated estimates of what's going to come out. Uh, that now I'm going to tell you that there's going to be a, a lot of cattle on feed. It's going to be over 100% for sure. Uh, but since we haven't seen a widespread release of, uh, of your average of analyst guess, uh, it's going to be kind of hard to gauge. But, uh, you know, the, the, the on feed totals for February 1st have got to be huge. I, I mean, these cattle, these uh, feedlots are bursting at the seams right now. There's just absolutely no place outside to have cattle and if people are uh, keeping cattle outside of the lots they're likely uh, they're grazing cattle that they're getting warmed up for uh, for grass and uh, and they're just piss antin them some hay and a little bit of commodity feed just to kind of keep them alive and keep them going but uh, that that's something to pay attention to and then we'll just have to see how it comes out but let's talk about your board on Thursday, February live cattle futures down 252 at 140.52. April down 245 at 142.30. Now, what would cause that? It, it's just the unrest and the war and and the fear mongering that's going on with this war. This war is going to be a, a dirty, nasty, bloody, deadly thing here uh, that that, uh, that that bully dictator has decided to uh, place on the world. You go on your back months of your live cattle, they were down a dollar twelve to down two fifty-two. <coughs> Excuse me. March feeder cattle down three sixty-seven. Wow, one fifty-nine ten. April down four forty-seven. They were down more than that earlier uh, at one sixty-three eighty. You go on your back months of feeder cattle, they were down a buck ninety to down three ninety-five. 
your grains were most <clears throat> mostly all higher your beans actually weren't but uh, corn was up 11 and a quarter cent at 695 uh, talked on our last visit about most of your cash corn is seven dollars well now our futures are going to be seven and and uh, get a, a positive basis on there we're going to be playing paying well into the seven dollar figure uh, for corn beans down 13 and a half cent at 16.61 and a half it was sharply higher early in the session and then turned around and, and came back and, and then came back lower kansas city hard red winter wheat get this 49 and a half cent a bushel higher sitting at 963 on the close of normal trading hours there and uh they they do raise a lot of, of uh wheat there in, in Ukraine and, and in Russia there and, and they think these sanctions are going to stop them from uh, exporting very much of it so oh, man that is going to add to it but my goodness I wish something would come along and help the cattle out how about fat cattle trade uh, it's just been kind of a mixed bag deal here it's going to be overall higher for the week our weighted averages are going to be higher uh, we did see a little bit of weakness in the southern plains but uh, very, very tight volume. And I think these Packers are short bought. Everybody you talk to, uh, even on Thursday late, was getting calls from Packers. Uh, and, but most everybody, we're not going to entertain lower prices. Now, we did have a few guys in the Southern Plains that took a dollar lower uh, than last week. But uh, still, uh, they need to trade some cattle in Nebraska. They've only sold about half what they normally sell. Uh, Texas has only sold 2,600 head for the week. You know, any, any decent sale barn would get that many cattle for the week. And the entire Texas feedlot area can't sell 2,600. You understand why we need minimum mandates for negotiated trade. How about Iowa? Uh, confirmed sales on Thursday, 8,600 head. Now they've sold about normal, about 21,000 head so far for the week. And the price is higher, one to two dollars higher live from 142 to 145. Dress sales steady to two bucks higher from 226 to 229. Nebraska 3400 head, but only 16,500 head for the week. They should trade twice that many. Live sales 142 to 144. Dress sales 226 to 227.50. Kansas about 4400 head on Thursday. Only 6,100 for the week. Uh, you know they're normally in that uh, to 12 to 15, maybe 20,000 head range. Uh, live sales steady to a buck lower because we had some 141. It was mostly 142, but there was a, a fair amount of 141. Uh, a few dress sales at 227 in Kansas, Texas. 1,900 head on Thursday. Only 2,600 head for the week. You go back to. Uh, uh, Dr. Fauci, I mean Dr. Kuntz uh, in Colorado State there, he, uh, he said that uh, to have robust trade in Texas, you got to have about 9,500. Well, we had 2,600. But he came back and said he did not do that study. He did not do that, that study and put out that information to encourage people to get behind mandated minimums on negotiated trade. Who do you think paid for that uh, research? NCBA, your checkoff dollars, people. How about uh, Texas live sales on Thursday? They had some 138. One deal at 138. Why would anybody sell at 138 when everybody else is selling at 142? Unbelievable. But one deal at 138, and then the rest of them from 141 to mostly 142. Box beef cutout values were lower again. Uh, but we're still seeing choice uh, selling at a premium to select, but not much. Choice uh, cuts on uh, Thursday afternoon, 259.24, down a buck 64. Selects down 441 at 254.55. Your slaughter uh, had a big aggressive slaughter on Thursday, 124,000 uh, estimated. But uh, just can't catch up from that disappointing Monday because, you know, all the, the slaughter people want to be off on President's Day. That's uh, kind of unheard of. But 478,000 uh, up through Thursday through the week. Uh, it's 10,000 less than uh, previous week, 6,000 less than the same week a year ago. Your actual slaughter information come in for the weekend in February the 12th. 
had your average dress steer carcass weight at 918 pounds. That was down 12 pounds from the previous report. Wow. Well, remember that cold snap that we had right there the very first uh, week of February? Uh, I drove through it uh, coming from the uh, cattle convention trade show there uh, up through up to Fort Worth there and it, it wasn't much fun but it was a cold snap all over uh, your feedlot areas and it zapped those weights guys and uh, now you see why the, the cattle market loves uh, uh, a snowstorm but uh, talk about what else is going on this is one of DV auctions biggest weekends for bull sales we've got uh, around 45 production bull sales uh, and heifers some too but uh, production sales cattle sales this weekend and uh, you guys need to get on to dvauction.com if you're interested in buying some uh, breeding stock go on there and, and uh, you can look at those uh, uh, videos and those catalogs and kind of shop on there and compare the pedigrees and the, and the EPDs and all that kind of thing and then get on to that sale view and bid right there at dvauction.com but about 45 production sale, cattle sales this weekend and uh, feeder flash guys going to Chandler Arizona to sell alpacas not that there's anything wrong with that let's talk about your feeder cattle market how about real time index late on Thursday sitting at 159.82 down a buck 47 so we saw, finally seen it succumb there uh, with all this pressure from that unrest over there in Eastern Europe but uh, RTI brought to you by margin tracks by Midcon how about some of your sales on Thursday winter livestock Pratt Kansas feeders are three to six dollars lower <clears throat> calves steady to two bucks higher had one stick out deal and and I don't know if you want to call these calves or, or feeders they were probably chronologically calves but they must have had some condition to them 71 head 766 pound steers in Pratt Kansas bring 169.50 how about farmers and ranchers livestock in Salina, Kansas? 2100 head there. It was mostly four to eight dollars lower than the good sale they had a week ago, but a week ago they didn't have a lot of uh, light steer calves for a comparison, so they didn't really call a trend on those. How about Mitchell livestock in Mitchell, South Dakota? 96 head, 816 pound steers bring 161.50. That wouldn't have been a big quote a week ago, guys. But that's a pretty big quote. Uh, cattle weighing in the eights, bringing uh, well over 160. You don't see it much anymore. How about Lamona, Iowa? Uh, my friend uh, Jason Allen sends me quotes out of there, and they got an awful good sale there at Lamona. Justin Miller sold a lot of cattle in there. He had one uh, big load of steers, or, or uh, loading a piece, 99 head, 762 pound steers and 171 and a quarter but the best quotes that I saw anywhere on Thursday your National Beef Wire top quote for the day come out of Valentine Nebraska and and I, I just couldn't decide so I'm gonna have to give both of them to you how about the L cross cattle they had 116 head of 500 pound steer calves bring 239 and a quarter and then the Burdick cattle 88 head 613 pound steers Bring 212. That's your feeder flash for Friday.